Hi, I'm Izzy from Minerva, and today in the sew along, we are going to be doing the Blanca flight suit by Closet Core Patterns. Now, you can probably see that I'm wearing it today in this video, and this is the one that I've made in the sew along. So, in the sew along, we have broken down the instructions really clearly so that they follow the exact instructions that you will find in your pattern pack. Um, and we've also broken them down into chapters so that you can really clearly see at which point in the video we're going through and talking about a certain point in the pattern. So for example, if you're struggling with the waistband, but you're not bothered about the, the beginning bit, about how to sew pockets on, you can zoom really easily forward to the chapter where we talk about the waistband and you can really clearly see that. We're really keen to make these videos accessible to you. Um, and so we've also extracted the instructions and um, the exact instructions that we are following and put them in the top left hand corner of the screen so that makes it really easy for you to read see what we're doing compare it to your instructions they'll be exactly the same um, and then see exactly how I'm sewing that along for you um, I hope that's really helpful and I hope you really enjoy sewing this pattern it is an intermediate sort of pattern you do need a little bit of experience but don't worry I'll be holding your hand all the way through the process um, and we can't wait to see your version at the end so if you're interested in sewing the exact version I've done, which is um, this one here, and um, this is my Blanca flight suit, um, I sewed this one using one of our core ranges of fabric, which is our uh, Meat Milk Tencel Twill fabric. And you can see we've got 21 colours of this behind us. Um, so absolutely incredible, a huge range of fabric and colours, really soft, really drapey. I picked um, the moss colour, which you can see here, um, but there's obviously a huge range of colours. Now, I have done a fabric focus video all about um, the colours and the fabric. We'll link that in the video description below. So if you're interested and want more information about the exact fabric that I've um, picked for the sew along, you can find it all there. I really hope you enjoy the sew along and let's get started. Let's take a look at the pattern. The pattern comes with um, two main options, which is option view A and view B. Um, but in and amongst that, you can, you can pick and choose where you want to put your pockets, what type of waistband you want, whether you want cropped trousers or um, short sleeves or long sleeves. So on the back, we've got a clear uh, line drawing which shows view A and view B. View A has got long trousers um, with pockets at the back, pockets at the front and zip pockets on the breast pocket location. It's got long sleeves. The pattern comes with little tabs which you can add on to the bottom of the sleeve cuff and also the trouser cuff which tapers in the legs and the arms which is a really nice feature. So that's view A. And view B is the cropped version with cropped legs and um, short sleeves and it's got a tie waist rather than a buckle waist feature. This is the view that I'll be showing you today. The fabric, it recommends denim, twill, canvas, linen, drapey fabric, um, tensile, twill, silk, anything. It's a very, very um, diverse pattern. I have sewn view A in twill before and that looked really nice. It was very structured um, because the fabric was quite thick and held its shape. But I'm really looking forward now to doing it in view B in a tensile twill because that has a lot more drape to it and is much lighter for the summer months. Take a look at the size chart next and decide which band you fall into. Don't forget to measure yourself every time you do a new pattern because you never know what your body shape might be doing. <laughs> um, with this we do need the bust waist and hip measurements. If you need to grade between sizes as well, the instructions in the packet show you how to do that. For view A, you obviously need different lengths of fabric depending on whether your fabric is 1.14 metres wide or 1.5 metres wide. Again, with view B it's the same scenario, so do take a close look at that. Okay, let's take a look at what is inside the packet. Inside the packet we have the instructions and also the pattern pieces. The instructions, as always, are very clear. Take a good read of those. Decide which features you want to do on your pattern. Take a look at the size chart. This one has a really detailed finished garment measurements, which is really helpful for figuring out how this is going to fit you. 
Now, because it is a jumpsuit and all in one, the pattern does recommend that you do a practice version first, and I would thoroughly recommend that as well, just so that you get the right amount of ease between your bodice and your trousers. And then there's the fabric cutting diagrams, which is really helpful depending on which view you're doing. These are for view A and view B. The instructions talk really clearly about seam finishes and how to mark your fabric. Take a look at that. I won't talk you through that today. That's all in the instructions. There is some useful instructions here which talks about interfacing. Now obviously we know that piece E and G, which is the, the collar pieces, that they do need interfacing. But it's worth noting, and I will be doing this for my um, tensile twill fabric, that it recommends that you do interfacing down the front, which is where the zip will be. This isn't necessary for thicker fabrics, but I do think for tensile twill it will be useful. It recommends 19 mil wide interfacing to be ironed on just to the edges of piece A and piece C in those locations. So let's get started. For this blanket pattern, we will need obviously our pattern, our fabric, a zip, interfacing, and matching thread. For this pattern, I've chosen to use the Meat Milk Smooth Drape Tensile Twill fabric, and this is the moss colour. And to match that, I've got the 561 Gutemann thread. We have a fabric focus video which talks all about this particular fabric that I've chosen to make this blank flight suit in. So do take a look at that. That is tagged in the links below the video. Pattern piece A, which is our front bodice. Pattern piece B, which is our back bodice. On this one, you'll note that there are a number of different lines line markings we need to add on, which include the breast pocket location, depending on your size, so mark those on. Um, there's also the front hip pocket markings, the waist notch, and a number of different notches around the pattern. On the back bodice, um, we will also need to make a note of these lines running down the pattern, because this forms our pin tuck line, which is a beautiful detail that we'll come on to later. It says on the pattern that you can mark the pin tuck line with a tailor's tack or carbon paper and a tracing reel. You will notice on my pattern, and um, because I'm making this for my body, I am grading from an, an 8 to a 10, so an 8 at the bust down to a 10 at the waist. That's one adaption I've made. And the other one is that I have done this pattern before and I know that I need to just lengthen it um, on the top bodice a little bit with this pattern. So I've added into the pattern, I've cut the pattern along the line where it says a lengthen or shorten here and I've added in just a centimetre to give me a little bit of extra manoeuvrability on the top bodice. Piece C, which is the front leg, now there are a lot of markings to fit onto the front leg because this is where we need to mark our pockets, um, our zip stop marking and also the hip notch as well as all of our standard notches. So in order to do that I have used one of my friction pens and I have drawn using my friction pen which irons off uh, when you iron it so you won't see it. I've drawn that onto the front of the trouser leg because that's where I'm going to overlay my pocket later. So that's a useful little tip. <laughs> Piece D, which is the back leg. And again, because we're going to be putting our pockets onto the back, it's important to make a note of these little um, pocket markers, which are the circles on the back of the pattern. And again, you can do that using chalk or using a friction pen. You can also just sew a little stitch in there, hand stitch a little stitch to, sh to demark where those little circles are and therefore where the pocket is going to be. With the trouser leg, obviously I'm cutting for the cropped view, but if you wanted to do the full length trousers, you, could, you would cut it at the bottom for view A, it clearly says, and cut here for crop leg view B, which is what I'll be doing. Pattern piece E, which is our back waistband, cut two in fabric and one in interfacing. 
and pattern piece F, which is our right zipper facing. Just cut one of these. Pattern piece G, which is our top collar. Cut one in fabric and one in interfacing. And H, which is the under collar. Cut two in the fabric. Pattern piece K is our short sleeve for version B. Cut two of those, add your notches, and L, which is our back pocket, and O, which is our patch breast pocket piece. Again, for view B, pattern piece P, which is our hip pocket, and pattern piece Q, which is our hip pocket lining. For the hip pocket lining, I've chosen to use a lightweight silk crepe. And finally, pattern piece R, which is our belt, and S, which is our belt loops. That should sort us out. To begin with, we are going to interface pattern piece E. And so with the wrong side of the fabric facing up, we're going to attach and iron on the interfacing. The interfacing has one rough side and one smooth side. We're going to put the rough side facing down onto the wrong side of our fabric. And when you're interfacing, you just need a dry iron. You're just letting that glue all stick onto the fabric and reinforce it. Just hold it down for a few seconds, move it along. Pattern piece G also needs interfacing. Again, wrong sides facing up and the bumpy side of the interfacing facing down onto the wrong side of the fabric. Because I'm using tensil twill, my fabric has a lot of drape to it. And the instructions say that for pattern piece A, we should also just put some interfacing to strengthen the front opening. So with wrong sides facing up, I've cut out interfacing according to the instructions, which is 1.9 centimetres wide. And I'm just going to line that up. On pattern piece C, if you're using lightweight fabric, it does recommend that you interface from the top of the waistband down to the notch, which is what we'll do now. So from the top of the waistband down to the notch. Rough side facing down. Pattern piece B calls for us to mark the pin tuck line with tailor's tacks or carbon paper and a tracing wheel. I'm choosing to use tailor's tacks, so I've got a long piece of contrasting thread. You can use embroidery thread if you want to make it even more clear. And I'm just going to do some really big, generous tacks. All this is doing is marking and helping me understand where I need to fold the fabric and iron it later. Just going to pull these loops through on the other side so I've got a bit of um, a bit of thread on both sides of the fabric when I cut it. Snipping the bits in the middle and gently pulling off the paper pattern. Now we want the tacks to show on both sides of the fabric, on both sides of the pieces. Okay, and there we have it. We have our tailor's tacks down both sides of back piece. The instructions ask us to put the wrong sides together and iron along that line, and then top stitch along the folded edge. So let's go and do that. 
We're now going to top stitch the folded edge of the pin tuck in place using a three mil allowance from the edge of the folded piece of fabric. So just three mil in, so it's quite close to that folded edge. Don't forget that your sewing machine can be reduced from a stitch length of 2.5, which is our standard, down to 1.6. And that's just a finer stitch. I'm just going to pull out these tailor's tacks now. We don't want that red stitching to be showing through on our final garment, do we? We now need to take the folded edge of the pin tuck and align it with the notch that we marked on the bottom here. Just pin that in place. And again at the top, just line it up with the shoulder notch. This is the right side facing up. And the pattern asks us to stitch over our pin tuck just to hold this in place. 2.5 centimetres, so I'm just going to realign that pin so I know that's where I need to stop. We're just going to stitch over our pin tuck lines using the same stitch length just to hold that in place. Okay, so we're just about to sew the pin tuck down in place now that we've folded the pleat over. So we've got a little pleat of fabric there. And we're just going to top stitch over the original stitching line of our pin tuck just to hold it in place. And we'll do the same on the other side. We're now going to sew the back pockets. The instructions say to fold down the top at the notches. Now this will be with wrong sides together. You find those notches, fold it down, and I'm just going to iron that. Then it says to top stitch the folded edge in place approximately one inch down. So when you top stitch, you want to top stitch along the with the front facing up so that you get the nice stitch on this side. So let's do that now. There we have it. Nice top stitch along there. And it's just caught the folded edge nice and neatly along there. Repeat for the other pocket. So with the wrong side facing up, we're now going to press all the raw edges in and under wrong sides together just as the instructions show us. Once you've ironed your pocket in place, you may find it helpful to use um, some fabric, a fabric glue pen just to hold it in place. Now the fabric glue pen, um, when you put it in the washing machine, the glue just dissolves, but it also just helps you hold things in place, especially if you've got bouncy fabric like I do. <laughs> just hold that seam down. Doesn't have to hold it all the way down, this is just a temporary fix. Just helps the fabric not to run away with you though. And now with back leg piece D, right side facing up, we're going to place our pocket on the four markers that we've got, one, two, three, four. The top corners align with the top ones, obviously. And the bottom ones should align just with the lower edge there. And then we're just going to pin it in place. And then we're going to top stitch the pocket into place by sewing at a quarter of an inch or three millimeters around the outer pocket edge. And then we're going to sew a second row of top stitching at six mil from the edge or a quarter of an inch from the edge back, back stitching at the beginning and end. Now 
when you do this, we're only going to be doing these sides, the sides and the bottom, not the top, otherwise we won't be able to get our hand in. <laughs> we're top stitching using a 1.6 mil length stitch. And we're stitching it three mil from the edge of the pocket. Now when you get to the corners, lift your foot up, twist the fabric round so you get a nice, sharp, neat finish and off you go again. Okay, so we've stitched around it once with the top stitch at three mil and now we're going to stitch around it again with a parallel line of top stitching, but this time at six mil. We're now going to assemble the back legs. So get your two back leg pieces and with right sides together, line them up. These are the pieces you've just sewn the pockets onto. Okay, so to line them up and match the notches. So we've got two notches there. Pin it in place and then sew this seam at 1.5 centimeters. So I'm just gonna stitch along this seam at a 1.5 seam allowance or 5 eighths of an inch. Okay, so we've stitched the crotch seam. The pattern now calls for us to finish the seam. So as you can see, the fabric is beginning to fray already, so we need to finish it. And finishing it basically means that we need to make sure that it doesn't fray anymore. So there's um, three main ways we can do that with this seam. We can um, use a zigzag stitch on our sewing machine, just to zigzag along the edge. We can use pinking shears just to cut the fabric. Um, to cut it along here, or we can overlock it using an overlocker machine, which is what I'm going to choose to do. Now the overlocker cuts the seam allowance as you go. And that's given us a really nice finish at that point. So the pattern asks us to iron this seam towards the left leg, which is this side, wrong side facing up, I'm going to use my tailor's hand to help me just get a really nice curve as I press that seam down. We've pressed the seam towards the left leg and now we want to stitch this seam down to the left leg. So we're going to turn it over so the right sides are facing up and this is our left leg. So we're just going to top stitch down this whole seam that we just sewed all the way down. We're going to top stitch in place on the left leg at six mil. We're going to sew the back waistband now. And there is an option to have belt loops, which I'm definitely going to do. So that is piece S, which is this one here, just one piece. And the first thing we need to do is finish just one of the sides. So choose which side you want to finish and how you're going to finish it. In my case, I'm going to use an overlocker. Can you see how this piece has two little notches in it? We're going to use those as guides to fold the fabric into thirds lengthways. And I'm just going to iron that in place as well. This is with wrong sides together. And with my finished edge, I'm then going to put that on top of the bit that I just ironed down, again folding up the notches. The instructions are now asking us to top stitch down one side and then down the other side using a three mil offset from the folded edge. Because this is a top stitch, we're doing 1.6 mil stitch length. Because we're top stitching we're using a 1.6 mil. Because we're top stitching we will use a 1.6 mil. Why can't I say this? 
because we're top stitching, we will use a 1.6 mil stitch length. We need to cut the belt loop into three pieces, each nine centimeters long. So you will have a little bit of leftover at the end. That's absolutely fine. With the right sides together, we need to baste these belt loops to the back bodice. I'm just going to pin mine in place. So then one goes at the centre back and the other ones go to either side of your pin tuck. Now there are no markings here, but it does say to baste the belt loop at um, 13 mil or half an inch from your pleat, which is here. So that's half an inch, that's about right. Okay, so we have basted those three belt loops in place. For piece E, which is our waistband, we have two pieces. We have one that's interfaced and one that is not interfaced. Now the one that is not interfaced is called our facing. I'm putting a little F on there to remind me. The instructions then say to press the bottom edge of the waistband facing, which is this one, up by half an inch or 13 mil. And to help achieve an even fold, it recommends that you stay stitch a line of stitching at 13 mil and then press the raw edge up. Um, where it's stitched. It just helps you give a really nice even fold. So we're going to follow those instructions. Putting my stitch up to a stitch length of five mil. I'm ironing this with wrong sides together. I'm just following the stitch line that I just sewed. We're going to get our back bodice piece and we're going to attach the waistband to the bottom of the back bodice, making sure to capture the belt loops um, in the stitching as we go. So we're gonna make sure the belt loops are facing up. And with our other waistband piece, the one that we've not ironed yet, be careful to make sure that you align the waistband so that it's curving down that way, so that it's like that. Okay, and these notches here will line up with the bodice piece back bodice. So we've got a notch here. I'm going to line that up with that notch. The instructions ask us just to baste this in place because we're going to re-sew the seam in a minute as you'll see. So using a long stitch, just sew that seam within the seam allowance, baste that within Baste that within the seam allowance. So we have basted the waistband with the interfacing to the back bodice, making sure that our belt loops aren't captured in the seam allowance, but are just caught at the bottom. They're still loose here. Turn the bodice so that the wrong side is facing up. And with the facing waistband, the one that you already pressed up on the bottom, you want to align that with the right side of the waistband facing, facing the wrong side of the bodice back. And pin in place, matching notches. We're now going to sew the seam through all three pieces of fabric, the waistband facing, the back bodice and the waistband with the interfacing on it. We're going to use a 1.5 centimetre seam allowance. Now the pattern asks us to grade the seam allowance here. Now we know that when we grade a seam allowance, we always want the longest bit of our seam to be on the bit that's going to be touching the kind of outside of the fabric. So, bearing in mind that the interfaced side is the side that is going to be facing and is on the right side, I am going to grade the waistband facing. 
and then the back bodice just so they're sort of staggered lengths <laughs> this one's a bit harder to cut because it's got the belt loops in it as well we're now going to get our back trouser legs and attach it to our waistband which we just put onto our bodice so right sides together that's our interfaced side we're going to match those up like that now I'm just going to spin it around so that I can <laughs> pin it a bit easier we're going to stitch this now at our standard seam allowance Now it says to press that seam allowance up towards the waistband, so it's captured in the waistband, and then grade that as well. So let's do that as well. We are literally just trying to iron this waistband up. Now remember when we grade, we, are, we leave the longest length to the bit that will be showing. So in this scenario, I'm actually going to reduce the back legs, the back leg seam allowance by half. Um, as you can see, we have a nice looking waistband on the front here. This is the right side facing up. But if we turn it over, our waistband at the back is still looking a little bit raw. So we're going to use our waistband facing just to capture all those seams into the waistband. Okay, so it does say to pin from the right side. Personally, I find that quite hard because it's hard to see where you're actually pinning. What we're trying to do is to align the folded edge of the waistband so that it just sits over the stitch line that we can see from the waistband seam allowance. Now I'm just going to pin this in place a few times with the wrong side facing up just so that I can see that it's definitely going to be captured there. And then I'm going to turn it over because we're going to want to stitch it from this side so we get a nice neat top stitch on the top. And I'm just going to pin it in place again just to make sure it all holds. This bit is actually really tricky to get um, really nice and neat and that's why I'm spending a bit of time just trying to get it really nice. I'm just going to check that on the other side. It's caught, all the pins have caught except for that one. Okay. And now we're just going to stitch in the ditch all the way along here. Nice and neat. Take it slow guys. We're just going to stitch in the ditch now and we're going to be stitching down this in between there. It's a good idea to check that you're going the right place and just keep going nice and slow. The final thing we need to do is to get these belt loops in place. So we're just tucking them under so they sit really nicely. We're just folding the bottom edge of the belt loop under by half an inch or 13 mil and pressing. And now we just need to sew this in place by back stitching and stitching again in place along each of these belt loops right at the bottom. So we're going to be stitching across the bottom on each of them. So I've stitched the top and the bottom of this belt loop at a distance of 3mm from the folded edge on both the top and the bottom. And there we have it a waistband with three belt loops and a back bodice, trouser legs with pockets, we're getting there guys, looking nice and neat on the inside. The instructions 
at this point split into two options. We either sew a zippered pocket for view A or we move on to view B's instructions which is just the, the patch breast pockets which is the one that I'm going to do. <coughs> so following view B's instructions I'm going to get my pocket piece O and assemble it exactly the same as how we assembled the back pockets on the back trouser leg. So let's do that now. <laughs> So we've ironed the top of the pocket under and then under again, uh, folding it at the notch at the sides. And we're just going to top stitch down the front of that on this side. Okay, and again, we're just going to fold in the sides with the wrong sides together. We're just going to fold this pocket so that the seam allowance is folded in, wrong sides together. Right, at this point we need to be sewing these patch breast pockets onto the front bodice which is pattern piece A. Now you can see on the bodice we have got breast pocket locations clearly labelled here. Now then if you've not already marked the pocket uh, tops on now is a good time to do it. Okay so we have pattern piece A which is right here and we are going to attach the pocket onto it like so. So this is the bit that you're really going to see when you're looking in the mirror, your, your pocket placement here. So we want to get this as accurate as possible. Now closet core patterns do suggest that, um, well, <laughs> tell us that we need to have um, the pocket parallel with this line here. So I'm just going to spin this around and pin the top corners according to my line markings. And just get that lined up and then I'm just going to like check it and make sure that it's parallel as I pin down the sides after that. So where are we sitting? We're sitting at bang on six centimeters there. Now we do want this to be so neat and straight. So lots of pins. <laughs> okay so what we're going to do now is top stitch all the way down as we did with the back pockets on the back trouser leg. Stitch all the way down with a three mil seam allowance from the folded edge of the pocket in. So we've top stitched one row of um, stitching all the way around the pocket and the instructions also require us to um, sew a parallel length of stitches all the way around that pocket exactly the same as we did for the back pockets. That looks so nice and neat. So yeah, well done. We're now going to attach our front bodice piece A with our uh, front leg piece C. Now as you can see on the pattern pieces, when we line these two up together, the notches match up. So we're going to do that. <laughs> Make sure you're lining up the uh, crotch with the centre front. I'm just going to twist that round so I can see where the notches are. going to finish this with my overlocker now. Now the instructions ask us to press the seam allowance down towards the leg that way. So we'll do that now. We're going to move on to sew the hip pockets now. 
And the first thing the instructions tell us to do is to make sure that we've transferred this top stitching line um, onto the right side of the pocket. Make sure you read the instructions really carefully here. It's easy to make a mistake with the pockets. We've got our lining piece Q and our um, pocket piece P. And it says with the right sides together, right sides together, we're just going to pin along this seam, across there, down there and across there, but leaving this side open. Now the interesting thing about this is that Closet Core Patterns have drafted the pocket lining, which is uh, this bit facing up here, a little bit smaller than the actual pocket itself, which means that it will then, when we turn it right sides out, the pocket lining will just naturally roll in a little bit more. It's pretty smart actually. So let's get that all nicely pinned in. And because it's, it's gonna want to sort of stretch out of place, just make sure you pop a whole load of pins in <laughs> and get it looking really good. We're just going to sew along this seam here, leaving this one open. Add a 13mm seam allowance or half an inch. And let's sew the second pocket. Just the same way as we did the first. 13mm half an inch seam allowance. Now we're just going to uh, clip the corners and this just helps us to be able to turn the pattern the right way, turn the pieces <laughs> the right way around and not get bit, loads of bulk at the corners. And the other thing the pattern asks us to do is just to snip around the curve and then just grade the seam allowance. So we're then asked to turn the pocket wrong sides together with the right sides facing out and to make sure that all of our points are really nice and neat and sharp. And we can do that using um, just something that is slightly spiky, a little bit blunt potentially. Just poke those corners out. What that does is give it a really nice, crisp, clean point to the corners. Now, you will remember when you cut this out that um, the outside bit of the pocket, which is this bit, is actually slightly larger than the lining, which means that when we press it, we should just be able to roll the outside slightly to the in, maybe just by a mill or two like that, and press it round. So, and then the lining will just naturally want to, um, want to allow that to happen, which is very clever. Nice piece of pattern drafting there. So let's give that a go. Next, we're asked to sew a line of top stitching at 13 mil or half an inch away from the curved edge of the pocket. So change your stitch length to whatever you've chosen to do, 1.6 is what I'm gonna do. And just sew it off. And we'll do that for the other side. And now it's time to get our front piece, which we've already sewn onto the legs. Um, and we need to position the pocket onto the front bit of the leg. Now, when we were doing the pattern um, marking and making a note of all the notches, we also made a note of this line on the pattern, um, which shows and dictates exactly where this pocket needs to be placed. So let's sort that out now and place it in place, lining up those little markers and lining the edge of the pocket up with the edge of the front trouser leg. You'll notice there's also a notch here at that point so that's a useful marker for you. And remember when you're pinning to always pin the key points first and then you can do in between pins to kind of keep everything in place as you sew later. Now, you do want this to be pretty accurate, simply because it is the front. <laughs> I'm just making sure that my lining is definitely folding under. Now, 
Now that we've pinned the pocket in place, we actually need to sew the pocket onto the front leg. The first thing the instruction calls us to do is actually to sew along here um, with a three mil offset or quarter of an, an eighth of an inch offset from the top edge of the pocket. So we're gonna sew along there. And then on our pocket, we'd already marked a line on the pocket here, it was on the pattern piece. Um, and we're then going to top stitch across there. What that does is it gives us like a little gap to uh, put the belt through um, the top. So let's do that now. Okay, so now that we've sewn the two uh, top top stitches on the top of the pocket, we've now got this lovely gap um, for our waistband tie to go through at a later date. And we need to sew the rest of the pocket onto the front pocket leg, front leg. And we're just gonna top stitch all the way down this side and across this side um, with a three mil offset from the edge of the pocket. Once we've done that, we're then going to do a second row of stitching, um, which is six mil from the first line of stitching. So let's do that first. So the first one starts at this point, goes down and then across at three mil offset from the edge of the pocket. I've sewn one line of stitching at a three mil offset from the edge of the pocket, all the way down there and across there. And I'm gonna follow the instructions and it says to sew a second row of top stitching, a six mil offset from your first row stitching. So that'll be about there. And just following around the same line. If you're not sure where, what the um, guides are for this and where six mil is, just get your tape measure out and actually just measure it. Check where your needle's going in, check where you want it to go in, and just line it up appropriately. Okay, that's looking really nice and neat. And now we just need to baste this in place, which is um, using a stitch length of about five mil. I'm just gonna stitch that in place so that um, it doesn't flap about when we sew it into the seam later. Now the next step is that we need to sew um, bar tacks at the top and the bottom of the waistband loop because this is obviously gonna get a lot of tension as we um, run our waistband through there and back out again. So let's do that now. Um, every sewing machine does this differently um, for mine. Um, personally, I've got a buttonhole foot that I put onto my sewing machine and then I change my setting and my stitch. Um, to the appropriate stitch. Everyone's sewing machine will be different. So have a read of your manual, get that out, take a look at how you do that. If your machine is pretty basic and it doesn't have the option to do bar tacking, don't worry about that. I would just recommend that maybe you just go backwards and forwards a little bit on the ends just to strengthen that. You could also do a really narrow um, zigzag stitch. Um, why don't you just get like a little piece of fabric and just do a few trial runs and see what uh, what you think looks good. If you don't know what a bar tack looks like, um, have a look on Google <laughs> or have a look at your jeans. Often around the, the zip bit of the jeans, there's a lot of bar tacking around there. So whatever you need to do now, bar tack the top and the bottom of that waistband. Now my machine, when it does the bar tacks, it starts, um, if I, if I put it in this way up facing my machine like this way, it will start here and then it goes backwards and then comes forwards and finishes here. So when I'm putting my um, pocket into the machine, I'm gonna make sure that I start at the edge on all of them. So I'll do these two like that and then I'll flip so the fabric around and start at this corner and then and that edge so that I make sure that the bar tack extends right from the edge all the way along. I've got my buttonhole foot on and I've set it to the settings that I want. And I'm just going to show you what my machine does, although obviously yours may well be different. So, what I want to do is to be lining up the edge of the fabric with exactly where the pin, sorry, exactly where the needle is going to sit in initially. So let's do it up here, this one. And just having a good look just to make sure it's all lining up nicely. That looks pretty good to me. And we're just going to go for it. Okay, 
Okay, and that is one neat bar tack. Now then, if you take a look at that in a bit more detail, you can see that we've got our standard stitch running down here, which is our standard top stitch. And then at this point, we've got our bar, bar tack, another one here, another one down here, and I've just got one more to sew up here. So we've sewn our front pockets on our bodice and also on the trouser leg. And now the pattern is asking us to sew the front zipper closure. Now this front zipper closure is a really nice way of doing zips. And if you just follow it step by step, it does make sense. So let's do this together nice and slow. So with the right sides together, we are going to line up uh, down this edge here. Now you should have already interfaced it as we talked about before. So let's just line up the notches and pin it in place. Make sure that you're getting your waistband just bang on, lined up nice and neat. Now what the pattern asks us to do is to actually sew from the top down to that circle line using a 19 mil, which is almost two centimeters um, seam allowance um, or three quarter of an inch seam allowance down this seam here. And what they've asking us to do is actually two base stitch, which will be your um, long stitch, so five mil length stitch all the way down to that point. When you hit that point, you then change the length of your stitch to a standard, which for me is 2.5, just to continue all the way along there. So we are stitching offset at 19 mil in our sewing machine. Again, if you're not confident about where 19 mil is on your sewing machine, just get your tape measure and measure it out. Right, I've reached my dot now. Um, so at this point, I'm going to uh, just take the needle out of the machine, change my stitch length to a standard 2.5 and continue around the rest of the curve at a 2.5 um, mil stitch length. At the notch, we're asked to just snip right up to the stitch line. Let's do that. The next thing the pattern is asking us to do is actually to finish the seam at the top of the bodice all the way down. Um, so if you've got a zigzag, a stitch on your sewing machine, you can finish the seam allowance that way. I'm personally gonna finish uh, the seam with an overlocker, but make sure that you finish both edges of the seam separately, because obviously this is where your zip is gonna be ultimately. So this bit needs to open and do not sew them together. <laughs> I think that'd be quite tempting if you're tired at this point in the, in the sewing process. So I'm gonna, um, Overlock all the way down to there, and then overlock the other side all the way down to there. And let's do the other side. So we've overlocked those two seams up to um, the notch. Okay, and then we've got this curve of the crotch seam down here, the front crotch, and it asks for us just to trim it down um, to 10 mil, so you can snip it along there. So you've just got a one centimeter seam allowance um, ultimately, so basically halving it. And at this point, you can overlock these two pieces of fabric together. You don't have to do them separately like you did those two separately. So because my overlocker trims as it sews, I'm just gonna put this into the overlocker and make sure that I'm trimming off um, just under a centimeter. So your front piece should now be finished nicely. And then at this point, they're finished together down here. Let's move on to the next step, which is to press the crotch seam allowance towards the left leg and the centre front seam open. Let's do that now. I'm just going to use my tailor's ham just to get around the curve of that crotch seam as we press it towards uh, the left. And then we just need to press open this front seam that we just basted in place a minute ago. And you can see the benefit of pinning really accurately, can't you? It's just bang on there, which is nice. Now, 
What we want to do is to have the front of the zip um, facing down onto the wrong side of the fabric and we want to make sure that it is lining up beautifully with the centre of the seam that you just sewed. I'll pin it in place first and then I think I'm just going to hand stitch it. Now when you're sewing the zip in place you must remember that the top of the zip should just align with this dot here. Now it does on mine because I've eyeballed it and I've got it right, but you may just want to double check that before you fully stitch it in place. Okay, so I'm just going to baste this in place now. I'm using white thread so that I can really clearly see where those stitches are. And what I'm doing is maybe, maybe if I fold it like this, it'll be a bit more obvious. I'm just stitching it to the seam allowance only and to nothing else. I'm only stitching it through one layer of fabric. We have basted the seam allowance on the zip along the bodice just to the seam allowance and halfway down the front leg. And at this point we need to make a note of where that circle dot was, uh, which is the bottom of the zip, which is where we want the bottom of the zip to be, and we need to make a little note of that. So I'm just going to base that in place so that when I turn it over I can see really clearly where the full stop of the zip needs to be. From the right side, we're now going to top stitch the zipper in place on both sides of that seam allowance, um, offsetting our stitch 6mm from the centre seam. Now we're going to stitch from the top all the way down to the point that we've just marked here, which is the bottom of our zip, and at that point we're just going to back stitch and stop. We're then going to top stitch down the other side and do exactly the same. Okay, so I'm switching out my standard foot for my zipper foot. As I was stitching that down one side, I did notice that because the fabric's quite, uh, it's a medium weight, it was sort of dragging on, on the machine a little bit. So I was stopping every now and again, just lifting the foot up just to take that tension away so that I've still got a really nice straight stitch going all the way down. I'm going to swap my foot over now so that I can sew starting from the top again going down just to make sure that tension is the same on either side. So we've top stitched once on either side of the zip, sewing through the seam and the zip, seam allowance and the zip obviously, and uh, we've done that from the front. And now the pattern is asking us to do another row of stitching just on the left hand side as you're wearing it, so this will be the left hand side as you wear it. Um, six mil from um, the stitch that you've already just sewn. So that's pretty straightforward. Let's do it now. The next piece we're going to sew with is pattern piece F, which is our right zipper facing. Now we've only cut one of these and the instructions say, with right sides together, fold the upper facing F in half matching the long raw edges. So with right sides facing, we're just going to make a note of where that notch is and we're just going to pin that in place, just like that. And again on the bottom side. And down here there's another little notch. Okay, so then we're just going to sew both of those two ends. Then it says just to trim it down and snip the corners. We're then going to turn it right side out, just this way. I'm just going to poke those corners out with my little stick here. <laughs> and the other side. And then we're just going to iron it. We're now going to finish the long raw edge of this, either with an overlocker or with a zigzag stitch. 
Now we need to apply our zipper facing onto the back of the zip. So this is going to cover the zip a bit like what you get on the front of a jeans, a uh, pair of jeans. <laughs> so um, as we wear it, this is our right hand side here and we want to align the facing to um, the right hand side on the edge at this point. So we want to align the finished edge of the facing with the finished edge of the seam and we want to make sure that we are aligning it at exactly five eighths of an inch from or 16 mil from the top of the neckline. So start off pinning there. Now that should really be where the top of your zip actually stops, as in, you know, the, this bit here where that stops. If you just want to measure it. Yeah, that's bang on. So I'm just going to pin that in place. Right, and the instructions also say that it should just line up on that side as well perfectly. I'm pinning it through all layers. That's looking really nice. Now I've pinned it with the wrong side facing up but we're actually going to be stitching it on this side. We're going to be top stitching it down here. So I'm actually going to re-pin it on this side because this is the side that I'm going to be uh, having face up on the sewing machine when I actually pin it when I actually sew it, I should say. Now, you'll notice that we did a double row of stitching on the left-hand side of the garment, on this side of the zip, and we've only got a single line of stitching on the right-hand side of the garment, which is this one here. So we're now going to stitch uh, using a top stitch, six mil away from the first line of uh, top stitching that we did on the right hand side and then that's going to mirror exactly what we've already done on the left hand side. So we're going to stitch right from the top down to our marker point down here. Our next bit of the instructions is simply to secure the crotch seam in place by sewing some top stitching around this area. So we have already pressed that seam to the left hand side as we're wearing it, which is this side. And what the instructions are asking us to do is simply to sew a line of top stitching six mil from the edge of the seam. So we'll be sewing and catching up with this line that we've just sewn down there all the way down like that, making sure that we're catching this seam allowance into that so that it just sits really nice and flat. If you want to at this point, you can just sort of pin it in place just to make sure that it's going to ride along your sewing machine nicely. Make sure when you're sewing this seam that you also capture the zip facing so that it stays down. I'm actually just going to pin that in place now and I'll re-pin it on the other side in a minute. The final thing to do now with the zip is just to finish the bottom of the zip. So let's do that together. <clears throat> what we need to do is simply sew a top stitch line which connects all the rows of top stitching at this point here. Um, and we're going to sew it with the right side facing up. We're going to back stitch at the beginning and the end. So let's do that now. Just going to sew across from there to here, which is the bottom of my stitching. I'm just going to use a 1.6 mil stitch length. And just line it up really nicely. Let's go for it. Okay, so we've sewn that across there um, and now the instructions are asking us just to um, bar tack each side, so this side and this side, using our sewing machine. So I'm going to um, change my sewing machine foot. Ok, 
Okay, fantastic. Well, guys, you've done a wonderful job. We've now fully sewn the zip into the front. If you haven't already, the final step to do is just to remove the basting stitches, which are the ones that sewed this seam together. So let's do that now. Just do this really carefully. You do not want to be um, pulling the fabric out, so just take it slow. And now time for the moment of truth. Nice. <laughs> That's looking really good now. Okay, well done, everyone. We have assembled the zip. And now we're going to move on to assembling and attaching the collar, which is all the way around here. Okay, so let's do that. We've got our front piece facing up. And with the right sides together, we're going to overlay the back bodice at the shoulder and matching the seams of the shoulders. I'm just going to pin that in place. Now that we've sewn those seams, we are now called to finish the seam, which I'm going to do with an overlocker and then press to the back and top stitch. So let's finish the seam first. This fabric is feeling so nice and drapey, absolutely gorgeous. Right, so we're going to press the seam towards the back. Now, I'm actually going to use my tailor's ham here just because it's easier to kind of get a feel for it that way. So I'm going to press it that way towards the back where the pleat is. Obviously, the front has got the zip. And the same on the other side. And now that we've pressed those seams towards the back, we're just going to turn it over and top stitch just to keep that end seam in place on the back side. And next, we just need to stay stitch around the neckline. Let's open that up for a bit of ease. So we're gonna stay stitch all the way around here. And that's just to um, keep the shape of the neckline in place. So we're just going to stay stitch it um, just inside the seam allowance. So uh, maybe about one centimeter from the edge of the fabric. Moving on, we're going to move on to piece H. And it says right sides together, sew the collar piece together along the straight edge at a standard seam allowance. So this is the straight edge here. So that's the one that we're going to sew along together. So right sides together. Let's give that a nice sew. Then you need to open it up, open up the seam allowance and just press that in place. Moving on to piece G, this is now the top collar and the instructions ask us to sew a line of stay stitching at 16 mil along the notched neckline seam. So that's here. What we're going to do is that that simply just gives us um, a guide to when we're ironing it later so that we can fold it up in place. So this is the notched edge down here. You can see it's got the shoulder notch there and you should have the notches. Although obviously if you've interfaced them like I have, you may just struggle to see them a little bit. Now that we've stitched that seam allowance, we can um, simply iron it so that we can just see those stitches and they act as a guide to whereabouts we're going to iron it. So we're ironing wrong sides together at this point. The instructions also say that we can um, clip into the seam allowance as necessary without cutting into the stitching line. So you can see um, there's a bit of tension down here and also up here. So I'm just simply going to snip along there, just making sure I'm not hitting the stitch line, just to take that tension out of the fabric. It's just sitting a bit flatter now, isn't it? We have our piece G, which is our top collar, and H, which is our under collar, and these two pieces are going to make up our collar. So the next thing we need to do is, with right sides together, pin the top collar 
which is this one to the under collar. So this is the right side. I'm just going to lay this over, anticipating that it's going to line up beautifully. <laughs> now, because my fabric is quite drapey, I'm just pinning it probably a little bit more than you'd need to if you were using a woven fabric that, that it was a bit heavier. Um, but as I said, mine just seems to pull out shape a little bit more. It's going to give it a lovely drape when we actually wear it. Can't wait to wear this now. It's not quite looking like a full garment yet, is it? But once we get this collar on, and it's just the sleeves and the hemming to do, isn't it? Okay, so we've pinned piece G and H together, and now we're simply just going to sew around the top, leaving the bottom bit open. We're going to sew that at a standard seam allowance. So we've sewn the three sides of the collar and we have a nice little gap here where um, we'll be turning it inside out in a minute, right side out I should say, but we do need to grade the seam. So first of all we're just going to snip off the corners and then we're just going to grade the seam around here. Once we've done that, we're going to turn the collar the right way round. And using something sharp, I've just got my piece of dowel here with a point on the end. <laughs> just going to poke the corners out so they look really nice and sharp and neat. This one looks a little bit rounded to me still, so I'm just going to turn it back this way and check that I've snipped it enough. Looks like it's struggling a bit, doesn't it? So I might just snip off a little bit more. So we've turned the collar the right way around and now we're just being asked to press it in place. This is where it starts to get a little bit interesting. So what we now need to do is um, get the collar that we've done and actually attach it onto the, um, onto the main garment. So the instructions ask us to pin the under collar, which is the one with the seam on it, with right sides together to the neckline. Now you need to be pinning, this is the bit that has not been folded under, the bit without the interfacing is going all right sides down. So let's just pin that in place now. Try and line it up as exactly as you can with the um, edge of where the zip is, because that bit is going to be the most noticeable bit. Obviously the front of the garment there, so it needs to be as tidy as we can get it. And it does say matching notches. So that notch tallies up with the shoulder seam. And then we have obviously the centre collar lines up with the centre of those two notches that are right at the centre back neckline. And then as we bring that collar round we have another notch. And when you get to this end, the one with the zip facing, you don't need to pull the collar all the way to the zip facing because obviously we're just attaching it to the actual sort of garment and the facing's a bit that we, the zip facing's a bit we, we're not going to see. So just line the collar up with the edge of um, the seam which attaches to the zip as you did on the other side. <laughs> Easier said than done. And once you've done that, you can start pinning in between. Now you will probably find there's a little bit of excess that it just needs to be eased in around the collar. So don't worry about that. Just make sure you're easing it in gradually. And when I say ease in, really what I mean is um, the collar has a little bit more fabric to it than the, than the neckline. So just keep pinning it at regular intervals of uh, making sure you've got the same amount of excess on either side of the pin 
and magically that excess should just disappear. The reason why we have that is because obviously the collar is turning out and over so it can have a little bit more excess and it needs a bit more give so it doesn't just kind of stick up straight. We've pinned the collar all the way around and now we're just going to sew this seam using a standard seam allowance all the way around there. At this point, once you've sewn the collar on, you just want to check and make sure that you haven't got any tucks along the edge of the collar. Now I can see that I have actually got one here, so if that's the case with you, uh, just unpick it, unpick that little stretch and just redo that again. It's not a big deal. Now we've got our collar piece. And we're just going to sew and stitch uh, with a 1.5 centimeter offset from um, from that side. Um, but obviously at this point where we've got our collar um, and that, we just need to pull it back a little bit so that we can get the needle right into there, right where the edge of that turnover of the top collar is. So let's get that lined up and looking pretty good. Okay. Let's go for it. Now the pattern is asking us to grade the seam allowance that we just sewed and also the zipper tape which is up here. So we now have our collar attached on one side, this side, um, and we've braided the seam, but we now need to sew the um, top collar onto the inside of the bodice and the, the neckline. So this can be a little bit tricky to get really neat. So what I would suggest, which I often suggest at these points, is to hand stitch it. Um, first of all, I'm just gonna pin it in place these handy pins um, and I just want to make sure that it's sitting really nicely specifically along these areas over here. If you've got any loose threads, if you have any loose threads make sure you trim those especially in the corners up here and here otherwise they might start poking through later and these corners of the collar can be, get a bit tricky guys. Okay. So I'm going to pin it in place and then I'm going to hand baste it before I actually stitch it. And what I'm doing is I'm just making sure that the stitch line um, is covered by the seam allowance of the collar here. Make sure you tuck all those bits in. I've basted it along the collar just to hold it in place while I top stitch it now, uh, three mil from the edge of this seam. And then that should neatly just catch um, on the inside of this over here. When I sew collars, I often find that it's quite tricky to sew the ends um, in place. So it can be easier to start um, in the middle and work your way to either end, which is actually what I'm going to do. So I'm going to start stitching here and work my way to the end and then start stitching there and work my way to that end. Just because sometimes there's so much um, fabric at the ends that it can get a little bit bulky and a little bit tricky for your sewing machine to actually sew over, especially if you've got a more basic sewing machine little top tip for you to choose if you want to follow or not. <laughs> I'm just going to remove my basting stitches now because I no longer need them. 
as I've top stitched the collars together. And the final bit of the collar is simply to top stitch all the way around the other three sides. Now that you've attached your collar onto your actual garment, then we just need to finish off the collar and top stitch all the way around there. The um, offset is again the same. Oh, actually it's not, it's different. So that we top stitch around the outer perimeter of the collar at a six mil seam allowance, rather than the three mil offset that we had along there. So it's a slightly uh, more generous seam allowance as you work your way around. You might wanna iron your collar again now that you've sewn it all together, just to kind of flatten it out a little bit. Mine is looking a little bit um, like it needs a bit of help on this side. So I'm going to go do that now. Well done on completing your collar. That should be looking super smart, <laughs> just like that. Oh, I cannot wait to wear this. It's going to look so cool, isn't it? Loving it. Yep, looking neat there, there. Oh, it's like so nice. Love that detail of that and just how the whole zip process like sews together so nicely with this pattern. Um, I think it's a really smart way of doing the zip. So well done, Closet Core. Okay, we will be moving on to sew the inseam and the side seams next. So I'll talk you through that next. Next, we're gonna sew the inseam of the legs together, and this is with right sides together. So I'm just going to get my fabric so that it is all nicely lined up, right sides together. There are a number of notches here, up at the knee, and also obviously the crotch seam, and then back down here and here. So we'll pin those first, and then we'll infill the pins in between. So I've pinned the inseam completely. I'm now just going to stitch it with a standard seam allowance. So we've sewn the inseam and now we're just going to overlock it. It says serge, it's the same thing as overlock or zigzag the uh, seam just to reinforce it and hold it in place so that it doesn't keep fraying away like it's doing here. I've overlocked this inseam. I'm now going to press it to the front and top stitch it at a six mil distance away from the seam along the entire length of the legs. So let's go press it. It's such a big garment now, isn't it? Okay, so next step, right sides together, we're gonna to sew the outer side seams. Um, together. Now at this point obviously this is where kind of the full garment comes together and it is ready for fitting once you've done these side seams. So the instructions do say that it might be if you want to be on the cautious side and you've not done a twirl um, you might actually just want to baste these side seams um, just so that you can check the fit and then if you need to take it out you want to make it a bit looser um, you can do that. Um, or again, equally, if you want to kind of bring it in, you can do that too. So I have done a twirl on this already, so I am not going to baste it because I'm pretty confident that it will be absolutely fine. And um, there are a number of notches on this. So um, as I said, we're pinning both that side over there and this side. So there's a notch uh, down at the ankle, there's one at the knee, um, I don't think there's a notch here, is there? I can't see one there. Um, but then at the waist seam, um, it says that the front waist seam will match the notch on the back waistband. So there's a little one here right in the middle of the waistband. So the, that's just gonna match that really nicely. And then there is a little notch um, halfway up the bodice and obviously the armpit. So let's pin those notches and those reference points first. Now again, I'm pinning quite a lot because this fabric has a lot of movement to it. Okay, so I've pinned all the way down one side. 
and I'm just going to go over and pin the other side now. I've pinned down both sides of my outer seam, which is going to go down the side of my body. I'm now going to sew those up at a standard seam allowance and then I'm going to check it for fit. <laughs> Let's go. Excellent. Now that you've sewn your outer side seams, you can actually take this garment away and try it on. Make sure you're checking that you're happy with the amount of ease on the waist and the hips, obviously, these two key points here and here. And uh, that's it really, those are the key points I guess at this point and we're just going to check and then we'll finish off these seams when we're happy with the fit. So let's go and have fun. <laughs> So I'm happy with that and I'm now just going to overlock the side seams. Now that we've overlocked those uh, long, long side seams, um, the instructions now ask us just to finish it, which we've done, we've overlocked it, and then press them to the back. So let's do that now. We're now going to assemble the short sleeves. Now this is view B, so this is the short sleeve version. You will have different instructions, slightly different if you're um, doing the long sleeve version, but here we are. This is the short sleeve version of view B. It simply says with the right sides together, match the short sleeves um, along the underarm seams, which are these, and stitch at a standard seam width and finish. And we'll repeat for the other sleeve. I'm now just going to overlock uh, the edges that I've just sewn. The pattern now calls for us to sew a double stitch, our basting stitches, um, around the head of the sleeve. So what we're going to do is between the single notch, which is at the front, and the middle notch and then the double notch over here at the back. We're going to sew a double row of stitches, basting stitches. These stitches are going to be a five mil length. So they're going to be sewn inside the 16 mil seam allowance. So the first one that I'm going to sew from here all the way across to this single notch is going to be um, probably about six mil in and the next one probably about 12 mil in. So I'm just going to start at this double notch and I'm just going to and I'm going to do long stitches at a 5 mil stitch length all the way until I hit this centre notch up here. Now at this point I like to back stitch about two stitches and then just keep going. I'm going to stop when I get to this notch here. Now I'm not going to back stitch that point. I'm going to bring the needle up and just give myself quite a lot of thread to play about with. Okay, so I've done one row and now I'm going to do a second parallel row. Just make sure you keep these um, out of the way, these strings, otherwise they'll get caught and you won't be able to use them later. So again, I'm not going to backstitch at the beginning, we're just going to sew forward. When I hit this centre notch again, I'm going to go backwards and forwards, two stitches. And we'll do the same for the other sleeve. We're now going to attach the sleeve to the armhole of our bodice and we need to do that with the right sides together. So let's turn the sleeve so that it's the right way around and then we're going to insert the sleeve effectively so it's kind of sat like that because that is how you want it to be 
um, ultimately. Mm -hmm. So on the sleeve, you'll find that there are uh, two notches on the back and one notch on the front of the sleeve here. And these will align with the two notches on the back of the um, armhole and one notch on the front of the armhole. So with right sides together, we're just going to insert this sleeve into that armhole. And the first one I'm gonna pin, let me just move this a bit closer to me, is this one here. So I'm, I'm going to line up the seams at that point, making sure that's nice and neatly lined up. I'm then going to line up the double notches on the sleeve with the double notch on the back and put a pin in there. Next one is to line up the single notch, which is where you did your back stitching. Um, of your basting stitches oh, with the seam on the shoulder. That's nice. And then finally the single notch which is here with the single notch on the front of the bodice. Okay so at this, this point you've got your four um, pins in place giving you your markers just double check <laughs> that you have definitely got your right sides together, okay? Because that's a really easy step to um, to miss and really frustrating later on if you sew your sleeve in inside out. Okay, so between underneath the bottom of the armhole, which is going underneath your arm, there, there is no ease allowance there. So it's really easy just to pin that in place. So let's do that first. That's nice and easy. Okay, so we've done that. So that's between those two notches. Now, at this point here, you will see that you've got quite a lot of excess fabric on the sleeve compared to the armhole. So in order to ease that in, this is why Closet Roll Patterns told us to do these basting stitches. These are just going to help us gather really evenly and really um, consistently the sleeve so that it ties up nicely with the armhole. So just get two of those strands from the end and just ease that along a little bit. Now there's not a lot of gathering to do, We're just gathering up to the point, up to the shoulder seam up here. I'm just sort of stretching that out to see if it works and it, it is looking like it's fitting quite nicely. So just even out the gathers and then start to pin that in place. Now the reason why you have um, a little bit more fabric on the sleeve compared to the armhole is simply that you need um, a reasonable amount of ease when you're moving your arm around because you move your arm backwards and forwards um, and so this area does get quite a lot of tension. Um, and also then it just helps the sleeve kind of sit on the top of your shoulder and it gives you like a neater finish there so it's not a round finish but you've actually almost got like a joint there. You can probably see now why I found it so helpful just to go backwards and forwards at the top centre of the sleeve on this pattern anyway, other patterns that won't work um, as a little technique because the reference points will be out but for this pattern because she's put the notch there to tie in with that shoulder seam uh, it just gives us a nice little point of reference there. Now I am pinning this in quite a lot because that's what the instructions say. <laughs> um, and also because it just ensures that we're just going to get a nice even finish all the way around the sleeve head. Okay, so we've pinned in that sleeve head. It's looking good. Now at this point, you've got two options to how you want to stitch this. We can either um, use a sewing machine and do a basting stitch. So a five mil length stitch, or we can hand stitch it. Now, I do know that Heather Lou at Closet Core does strongly recommend that you hand stitch this. It just helps to set the sleeve in really nicely and um, seems to um, prevent gathers coming along um, where you don't want them because you just want that shoulder to be eased in. There shouldn't be any puckers or, or gathers shown when you actually stitch it. So you've got two options. You can either just baste it in place first and then stitch it properly, or you can hand sew it and then stitch it properly with your sewing machine.
For the sake of this demo, I'm just going to use my sewing machine and base stitch it. Once you've basted that in place, whether you've hand stitched it or machine stitched it, um, turn it so that it is the right way round. And just what you want to do now is just check all the way around the seam that there are no puckers or gathers anywhere. So as I run my hands along there, I can see there's nothing. It's all looking really nice and smart. Okay, so once you've checked that and you're happy with it, you may need to go back and redo some bits just to make it kind of look nice and neat. Um, you now just want to stitch that properly with your standard stitch length now that you're happy that you've eased that in enough. So let's go back and do that. Okay, once you've done that, it's time to finish that seam so it's nice and neat. I'm going to do that using an overlocker. Excellent, well done. So once you've done that, the final thing to do on the sleeve now is to press that seam allowance towards the sleeve. Once you've obviously done that side, you then need to do the same for the other side. So a huge well done for getting this far. We're almost there, there's only a few more steps to go. So we've sewn both of our sleeves in um, and now it's time to hem the sleeves and also the legs at the bottom. Try these on now and I would suggest that you uh, pin up the hems on both the sleeves and the legs so that um, you get a feel for the length before you try it on. So pin that up, you're um, rolling it under by um, 13 mil, half an inch, and then roll it under a second time by one inch or uh, 25 mil. Um, so pin that, try it on, and then come back and we'll iron it in place. Okay, <clears throat> so we've got our sleeve here and I'm just going to carefully mark on where um, half an inch or 13 mil And I'm just going to get my tailor's ham, actually, and just put this under here. I think that's just going to help me get around it all a little bit easier. Okay, so we've, we've pressed it once, uh, up once, and then it's asking us to fold it over um, by 2.5 centimetres, 25 mil or about um, an inch. Okay. So we've now pinned that hem in place and we're now simply going to top stitch it. So I'm very gently going to turn it round so that I've got the right side facing out. And let's go to the sewing machine to top stitch that in place. Now at this point I'm just going to sew my um, hem of my sleeve and I've taken the cover off my sewing machine so that I've got um, a bit more space to kind of get that sleeve in and around my sewing machine and I'm just going to check exactly where my marker points and reference points need to be on my sewing machine. So if I line up the edge of the um, sleeve that I folded over here on this marker uh, I think that, or I believe that, put my foot down, the needle is just going to sit and sew a line just nicely along here, which will capture the bit that I've folded under and sew it nice and straight. So for me, point two is going to be, that line there is going to be where I'm going to sew and um, mark my seam. Now for you on your sewing machine, that may be somewhere different. Um, so check your sewing machine. I've turned my sleeve the right way around, ease that back on again, and lining that up there. Now you will probably find with this that um, you just need to make sure the tension is constantly pulled on the sleeve, because if you don't, um, you might find that some of this kind of puckers, like you've got a bit of excess here that just folds over when you get to the end. So just make sure that you're holding the tension nice and firm. Your stitch length should be um, a top stitch length, which for me is 1.6. Um, and so let's go for it. Sewing nice and slow, please. <laughs> you don't want to make a mistake at this point. Okay, and there we have it, our lovely seam all done. And on the other side, we've managed to capture um, our folded over 
bit so we've got a lovely neat seam there well done so continue that for the other sleeve and both the bottom legs So once you've pressed your edges like that, the instructions then simply say to fold the uh, belt loop together lengthwise um, and press it in place. Okay, well done. Now that you've um, pinned your uh, belt loop uh, in place, uh, the instructions do just say to quickly just double check that it will actually fit through your belt loops, which it will. Look at that. Perfect. I'm going to take that back out again. And then the next thing to do, and this is the final thing, guys. The final thing now is just a top stitch um, all the way around the belt loop. So that's all the way around, all four sides. Top stitch that, and then you are all set and ready to go, and your garment will be done. So let's do this. And that, my friends, is a finished garment. Well done. <laughs> So well done and congratulations on finishing your Blanca flight suit. You should be super duper chuffed with yourself for having finished this. It is a really um, in-depth and involved pattern. So well done for seeing it through to the end. Absolutely incredible. Now, we would love to see your version of the Blanca flight suit. So please do create an account on our Minerva website and share your photos and your thoughts and your comments. Um, we're really keen to see that and I personally can't wait to see what you've made. <laughs> now, if you've got any questions or comments regarding the sew along or the fabric that I've picked, be, feel free to um, post in the comments below and we will get back to you as soon as we can. I really hope you've enjoyed this video. Um, thank you for watching and um, I'm sure we'll see you again soon.